For the past six years, I have had a dual PC gaming setup, pretty much since I've started my channel. And one of the most important things to me is having the absolute lowest latency and simplest dual PC setup. I don't want to be having to deal with different audio sources, video sources. So typically, if you're going to do a dual PC setup and want it to be simple like that, you're going to use a capture card for your video and a GoXLR or some sort of audio interface for your audio. Since 2020, I have had the Aver Media Live Gamer Duo. It does two inputs so you can have your gaming PC as well as a webcam or like a camera, higher end one. And it only records at 1080p though, which is starting to become an issue just because I am starting to film more in 4K as well as I have a 4K monitor and the scaling just doesn't look right. Still passes through 4K, but just the actual recording doesn't look super high quality for you guys, which is where this comes in, the Elgato 4K Pro. This is 4K 60 capture, something that literally the 4K 60 Mark II has been since like 2018 or something. So this isn't a new thing, but what it is though is HDMI 2.1. Why does HDMI 2.1 matter? Because that means that it should be able to potentially support passing through my 4K 240 Hertz OLED. I did a lot of research on this before I actually purchased it. It seems like no one's really been able to do it. I've seen about one Reddit thread where someone tried to do it. No one else seems to be dumb enough to try it, but I'm gonna see if I can get pass-through working, which would ultimately be the best thing possible. Currently, if you wanna actually run dual PCs, for example, with me, this is on my old capture card, you actually have to duplicate. So if I go into advanced display, I have my Alienware as well as my capture card. This is not really optimal. There used to be input lag that was added with this, but there no longer isn't, but it is just a little bit annoying, especially if I wanna film BIOS and things. So just for some research, does HDMI 2.1 support 4K 240? Yes, it does. And 4K 240Hz pass-through supports it, but the issue is that it seems to have some issues with display stream compression, which does kind of confuse me. Literally, to get 4K 240Hz to actually run at HDMI 2.1, you have to use display stream compression. So I don't really understand what is going on, if it works or not, but we're going to be installing this, replacing my capture card, and then we are going to be actually testing to see what we can do. Also, affiliate links down below if you are interested in picking up one of these. All right, let's do a quick little unboxing. It seems like we get a the capture card, obviously. I remember that this seems like a very similar experience to my HD Pro that I got back in like 2017. It was 1080p only, like that's the reason why I no longer have it. And let's just ignore this for now. So here's the capture card, super simple, HDMI in and HDMI out, input from your gaming PC, output to your monitor. You do also get a nice like braided HDMI 2.1 cable. Good call Elgato, this is something I really do like. A lot of people don't have 2.1 cables, I'm going to be using this from my gaming PC to the Elgato, and then the HDMI cable that came with this 2.1 display is going to go from the output to the actual monitor. Goodbye, Evermedia Capture Card. You've been with me for five years through all my content. Appreciate it. Um, one thing I didn't like, though, is this thing had RGB. This thing doesn't. Should make the PC. I don't like my PCs to have RGB. I'm weird like that, but let's put it in. Elgato's in. Before I actually set it up though, I am gonna turn the PC on and install the drivers. I think that might be a good idea. Okay, Elgato, I got an important question here. So, I go select 4K Pro, because that's my device. And I want, I don't want these, I don't want any of this. I just wanna hit find hardware drivers. What is this web page here? This is, what? Like, I don't get it. I'm going to see, though, what happens if I open up my OBS? Like, can I just get it to pull up? Let's see. It'd be this video device. And 4K Pro shows up. I mean, let's make it 4K real quick. And, yeah. I mean, cool. We'll see. Let's set up the cables now, actually, and just see what happens. Okay, here we are in OBS. Here we are. Let's right click, go to display settings real quick. Just one device, perfect. All right, moment of truth, advanced display. If we scroll down here, we do get up to 240 Hertz. And, okay, keep changes. 
Yeah, this is 2560 by 1440. Okay. So, 1440p, 240Hz is an option. We're gonna actually gonna go to NVIDIA for this, just because I think it's gonna be a little bit nicer to look at. So, yep, NVIDIA, 4, 4K, 144, that's going to be our limit. So, let's just make sure that does work. I mean, <sighs> yeah, this would have been nice, but, you know, what are you gonna do? Yes. So, if you have one of the older capture cards that only does 4K 60 pass through, I guess if you're on console, this could be a cool option, but I think that if you're a PC gamer who wants 240 hertz, there's just nothing out. I'm gonna see what I can do though. I'm gonna actually go install and got, get, install and got a utility and see what I can do. Okay, it's been a little bit and I finally got 4K 240 hertz pass through working, which is cool, but it's not really what I wanted to do. There's a couple issues, main one being if I want to go into OBS, I'm stuck at 1080p 240 hertz. Obviously, I could drop it down to 60, but 4K is not possible at all. The way I was able to do this was going into 4K capture utility, changing the EDID to 4K Pro 4K 240. Seems like this must be like a newer thing because when you look at old screenshots, this never existed. So this is a newer EDID. Good job, Elgato, for supporting people but that is how you actually get pass through working. But to get the way I want, I'm still going to have to display Clem. Maybe this can be something that can be fixed in the future, allowing for 4K 240 Hertz recording, because obviously you have the 4K signal, just don't take every Hertz. I don't know, not an engineer. I don't create capture cards. I just review them when I buy them every five years. So, is this still a capture card you should get? Yes. Um, the Ever Media ones are going to do the exact same thing. So don't think this is just an Elgato thing. Um, this was a really good capture card. I'm glad I have it. It should improve my content, make it a lot clearer. Um, yeah. Uh, it's the next day. I stayed up till 2 a.m. last night trying to get this to work. And I spent a lot of time today trying to get it to work. And I figured out the problem. Elgato was lazy when they created this capture card and they used the same internals as the 4K 60 Mark II, like the old gen one. They kept the same internals, but they just set up HDMI 2.1, which is cool. But here's the thing. You can downscale resolution for capture, but you cannot downscale frame rate. They did actually allow this though with the 4K X, which is like the USB Thunderbolt drive or capture card, that one allows you to film at 4K 60 while actually passing through 4K 240. The Avermedias medias do not allow that. This is the only capture card. So if you are someone who has a similar setup to me, you're a streamer, you wanna do 4K 240, you need, and you still wanna film at 4K obviously, you're gonna need the 4K X. Trust me, that's the solution. Um, so yeah, Pfft, Elgato, why, why release, if you're going to release expensive hardware, at least actually like properly set it up. So yeah.